final leg. So we know that the 2020 Olympics were unfortunately postponed until 2021. I want to talk about some of the athletes who are going to be significantly affected by that delay. A lot of the young athletes, Saul Nasser, Christian Coleman, Noah Lyles, they might be fine. Of course, they're just like everyone else. They have to adjust their training. But let's jump into some of the athletes who are getting towards the end of their careers and are definitely going to have to stretch things a little bit more. So first off, we have Allison Felix from the United States. You guys should check out the last video I did specifically on her on if her potential chances of making it to the 2020 Olympics. Of course, this is going to be a big hindrance. She's definitely going to keep training. She's noted that she definitely wants to keep training for that 2021 year, but she's getting much later in her career. This is actually going to be her fifth Olympics. The first one she was in was the 2004 Olympics in Athens. That's when she won the silver medal behind Veronica Campbell Brown in that 200 meters. So she's definitely going to be fighting for her final Olympics. She's coming off childbirth back in 2018. She made the Doha World Championships, got gold medals as part of the women's 4x4 and the mixed 4x4 relay. So this is going to be her last Olympics. Let's see if 2021 is going to be a good sign for her. She has to first make the team and then getting onto the podium. She'll have a lot of competition between Saoui Nasser, Sharika Jackson, Shawnee Milowebo. That 400 meters is going to be very tough. But Allison Felix, let's see how she does going into the 2021 Olympics in Tokyo. Speaking of the sprints from Jamaica, we have Shelly Ann Fraser Price. So she's coming up at her fourth Olympics. This would be her fourth Olympics. The first Olympics she ran in was 2008. The first Olympic gold medal that she got in that 100 meters where she ran 10.78 seconds. Amazing performance for her. And she's really been back on the rise. Of course, we know she gave birth back in 2017. She came back in 2019 and managed to grab the gold medal at the Doha World Championships. So it's very likely that a lot of people would have had her as the favorite going into these Tokyo 2020 Olympics. But now that it's in 2021, of course, she's still going to be informed, but it shifts things a little bit. There's a couple young athletes in the 100 meters who are going to be on the rise and definitely going to be challenging Shelly Ann Fraser Price. So definitely keep a lookout for her. It might make things a little more challenging, but she still might be the favorite going into the Olympics next year. Now, moving over to the men's side, we have Justin Gatlin from the United States, along with Shelly Ann Fraser Price. This would also be his fourth Olympics, but he dates back all the way to 2004. He is the Olympic 100 meter gold medalist from the 2004 Olympics in Athens. Of course, he's been one of the mainstays in the sprints over the past couple years. And even towards the end of his career, he's been very consistent. 2017, he got the gold medal at those world championships, beating out Christian Coleman and Usain Bolt. 2019, he had another great season and managed to get the silver medal behind Christian Coleman. So he potentially would have been a medal threat in 2020. I think he's still going to be a threat in 2021, but that 100 meters has a lot of guys who are really attacking it and going for spots on the podium. So it might push Justin Gatlin a little bit off, but I think because of his experience and because of how consistent he's been in the later half of his career, he might be able to not only make the US team, but potentially get onto the podium. So keep a lookout for Justin Gatlin in 2021. Now let's talk about the field events. I have Valerie Adams from New Zealand. She has been a mainstay in the event since the early 2000s. 2004 was her first Olympics as well, where she got seventh in the shot put that year. Ever since then, she's been dominating the shot put, getting gold medals in 2008, 2012, and then a silver medal in 2016. She's taken time off over the past couple years to have children. Most recently had another child last year, but she said that she's coming back. This would be her fifth Olympics, again, dating back to 2004. There have been a lot of changes in the event a lot of youth that have been coming up but she's one of the best again in history in the women's shot put so definitely see what she's going to be able to do in the 2021 olympics now still in the field we have katarina ebar gwen from colombia in that women's triple jump she has also been a mainstay in the event for the past couple years she actually dates back to her first olympics in 2004 didn't compete in the triple jump but actually competed in the high jump at those athens olympics this would be her fourth olympics 2004 2012 and 2016 2016. She got the gold medal in 2016, so she's the defending Olympic champion, but she's getting towards the second half of her career. Of course, we know Yulimar Rojas is on the rise, got the gold medal in 2017 and 2019, and then also broke the indoor world record in the triple jump just this year. So Katarine Ibar Gwen, she's definitely going to be pushing towards that Olympic Games gold medal again, but definitely getting to later career. I think she's definitely going to be on the podium, though, just my personal opinion. Look out for her. Heading back to the sprints, we have Veronica Campbell-Brown 
down from Jamaica in the 100 and 200 meters. Now she is one of the absolute veterans in the sport. Of course, she dates back to 2000 as her first Olympics where she got a medal as part of the four by one team. She got gold medals at 200 meters in 2004 and 2008 and then has got Olympic medals all throughout her career 2012 and 2016 as well. She also noted she wanted this to be her final Olympics. So delaying it one extra year does put a little bit of pressure because the sprints are extremely challenging. The sprints is really a youth event of the 100 and the 200 meters and the 400 meters as well. So Veronica Campbell Brown is definitely going to be fighting with a lot of people to not only get on that Jamaican team, but to potentially medal. But she's one of the fighters. She's one of the veterans. So keep a lookout for her in 2021. Now back on the field, we have Renola Villanine in that men's pole vault. He has been one of the greatest pole vaulters of the past decade. He broke the world record. Of course, Manu Duplantis has surpassed him in the world record, but he has been super consistent. 2012 was his first Olympics. He got the gold medal at the Olympics there. In 2016, he got the silver medal, just missing out on the gold medal there in Brazil. So this is going to be his third Olympics, but he's getting a little bit up there in age. And of course, we know there's so many young athletes, Manu Duplantis, Peter Lizik, Sam Kendricks. All these guys are really challenging in that men's pole vault and pushing the bar, no pun intended, much higher than it was before. Renola Villanine, though, because of his consistency, he's always been a medal threat and he's definitely going to be a medal threat in 2021. So keep a lookout for him. I think he's going to be in the mix in that men's pole vault. Now, finishing off on the track, we have Mo Farah from Great Britain in that men's 10,000 meters. So he took the past two years off to run the marathon distance where he had a little bit of success. He got, of course, the European record in the marathon. He didn't have as huge success as we might have expected, but he said that he wants to come back to the track and defend his Olympic 10,000 meter title. Unfortunately, the Olympics being delayed does hinder that a little bit. There are so many guys, so many young guys in the 10,000 meters who are really attacking that event and are definitely going to be putting a challenge on Mo Farah. Even in 2020, Mo Farah probably wouldn't have been the favorite, but in 2021, Mo Farah, he's one of the greatest competitors. So we might see him go for not only a medal, but potentially push towards that gold medal in the Tokyo Olympics in 2021. So those are the main athletes I wanted to talk about, but there's a couple others who are either defending Olympic champions or still in the mix and definitely going to be potentially challenging for medals in 2021. I think of Barbara Spatakova from Czechoslovakia. She's the world record holder at the Javelin and been one of the most consistent athletes in the Javelin over the past couple years. We also have Tiana Bartoletta. She's a defending Olympic champion in the women's long jump from the United States. She's going to be looking to defend her Olympic title. She's going to have some competition though from Brittany Reese, also from the United States in the women's long jump. She's a silver medalist from Rio in 2016. Both these ladies though, again, a little bit later in their careers, but they are probably still some of the best long jumpers in the world right now. So definitely going to be challenging for some medals there. Also, we have Asafa Powell from Jamaica. He has been one of the greatest sprinters in the history of the 100 meters over the past over 15 years or so now. Since 2004, when he ran the Olympics there in Athens, he's been a little bit up and down. His career has been hindered by some injuries and also some you know unfortunate performances, but he definitely said he wants to make this one of his final Olympics. So definitely keep a lookout for Asafa Powell. All right, so those are just some of the athletes who are getting later on in their career who I think this Olympic delay might affect them a little bit more than some of the younger athletes. But I think all these athletes I listed are definitely medal threats to get medals in the 2021 Olympics. So keep a lookout for them. Leave a comment below. Let me know some of the athletes who are later on in their career who you think might have been affected but are still definitely contenders for medals in 2021. All right, make sure you guys like the video, subscribe to the channel, and we'll be back again for the next video. Thanks.